Okay. Um, so today we're going to talk about what storytelling means for your pitch. I'm going to give you some very specific tips on building your best pitch. And we're going to practice together because I think uh, pitching, like boxing, like most sports, requires using a muscle and practice makes all the difference and lots of time for questions. We can't do it all today. We only have an hour, but we're gonna do the best we can. So let's start with the basics. Let an assumption, what is a pitch? Here's the thing, you're doing it all the time. You're always pitching your work, not just in pitch sessions. You're doing it in elevators and networking in one, five, in my case, it's often seven minutes. You do it when you leave behind stuff for investors. You even do it without a deck, you do it face to face. You're doing it in all of your web and promotional content. Assume you are always pitching. So for you, for startups, storytelling means this, create a pitch that connects with your audience. And the reason is that I want you to connect more and convince less. This is what I learned in my experience in telling stories. In all of the presentations I've given in my career, I, want to con I was trying so hard to convince the audience with data and I forgot that I needed to connect with them more. And that's important for humans. What this means is, well, your audience is probably not gonna remember the data. There are cognitive studies that show this. What they'll remember is you and your story. And your story is something that they're gonna care about. You need to get the audience's attention first before you tell them how fabulous you are. This persuasion and action will be more likely. It means your audience is gonna engage. They're gonna ask questions. They're gonna maybe invest and they're gonna remember you. More connecting, less convincing. So the power of a good pitch, it gets more than sharing information, right? If all it took sh was sharing information, couldn't we just send our leave behinds to investors and assume that we'd be successful? It's more than sharing information. You need to capture the attention with something I'm gonna care about. So attention means that I'm gonna create an interest in the audience. Connection means I build trust and persuasion means I get their trust and understanding. And ultimately what we all want is action. I want buy-in. I want you to care more, get curious, and ultimately invest in me. So first, here are the tips. And these are the things we're gonna work on if you so choose in breakout rooms. The first step, I want you to start making people care. And that means starting with a story. So what is the problem you're trying to solve? What about your solution is gonna make the difference? What's the market opportunity? You don't start your pitch with the solution you created. It, the reason people are gonna care is about what you're proposing to fix. Now, in my pitch to you today, when I started this presentation, I could have opened a slide with, good morning, I'm Joanne Peltier. I've been working in the public sector for over 20 years. I'm a communications expert. I could have listed my resume and watched your cameras close quickly. I would have been bored listening to myself. I chose to do something different. I introduced something new about me and different about me. I showed you what I'm trying to teach you. First, make people care. Next, make me believe in you. So a pitch is a time to shine, right? So what are you gonna do to make the difference? And often in pitches, we tend to start with this. We start with my solution is really innovative. It's creative. My team, 10 extraordinary people, they're awesome. And here's our milestones in progress. This can work, sure. But if you haven't got me caring, I'm going to forget about all this quickly. So first make me care. Then tell me why you're great. And finally, for the most important part, make your ask. So. Sometimes we forget, ironically, to be really specific about what you want. Do you want money? Do you not want money? Do you want expertise, advisors, mentors, collaborators, financial support? Fill in the blank, but tell me specifically, give me something to work with. 
This seems so obvious, and yet time and time again, both most recently at Zoo, at District 3, and other startup ecosystems, I see it all the time where we forget to make the ask specific. I'm going to stop sharing. That was really quick. Are there questions, comments, confusions, care, believe, join? Have any of you done that in your pitches? I know Alexandre has, and I know Danielle has, and I know Amin has, for sure. Me, me I, I have a question, uh, John. Uh, the ask, uh, even, you know, for a pitch, it's very clear because you're going for something, your investment, a project, a client, something. When you're into, you know, some people just invite you to sit down and tell you what you do, do should, should you always, be clear with the, the ask it, like even in that situation when you're just telling like this is what we do and let's see how we can work together uh you, you know you're gonna have to measure that for the the individual uh uh conversation that you're having like you don't you don't want to be oppressive with your asks either but um it helps a listener to know what you're asking for right you if your goal in, in talking to someone is to create a connection and to, to build on it, if you're not asking for anything, what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to say, oh, that's really nice, but thanks and walk away, right? If you ask me, you give me a chance to tell you, actually, I'm, I don't think I can do that, but I know somebody who can, right? Cool. So every opportunity to come back to the sport metaphor is a muscle that you use. Every opportunity, every time you pitch, you're testing your muscle and you're practicing and it makes a difference each time. So the story I told at the front end of this uh, presentation is one I've told countless times in multiple variations at length. Um, and I'm gonna continue telling it as an example, as a pitch that I do for storytelling, the more you do it, the better you get. Great, thanks. I see Paul is here, Paul Cal, who also does care, believe, uh, join very well. There may be others. <clears throat> so there's a question in the chat from Bujit. I'll just go to that. Um, how to create trust when your audience has its own idea of what they should do and they think they know better. Well, don't we all think we know better? We're all experts in every domain. There's no question, right? So. In a way, I'm asking you to leverage what you know is a human vulnerability. We wanna connect, right, as an audience. And so I'm not asking you to pour your heart out of every personal uh, story into your pitch, but give me something that shows an area of humanity that I can connect to. Make me care about your product, right? And so Brigitte's question is super important because even as an audience member, if I have my own idea of what you think, what I think you should do better, you're hooking me in and I'll ask a question and it gives you a chance to correct me, to bring me on board. The alternative is if you don't get me to care, I'm not even gonna tell you what I think. And will you win everybody? Maybe not. But the care, believe, join formula um, really is a, is a cognitive tactic to engage your audience. Je sais pas si ça vous répond, Brigitte, mais, uh, okay. I think, uh, I think we have someone with their hand up, float for NY. Sorry, I'm muted. Um, so a quick question in regards to, to data. Um, and yeah. you know the whole portion of a pitch where you need to talk about your market size and then yeah. growth and all of that um so a lot of times that's communicated through numbers and you know saying uh year over year growth or you know the, the market side in terms of billions a lot of times also it feels like it's just numbers that um it, unless you have like a dedicated uh, marketing uh you know research team that's getting those numbers it's stuff that's pulled from the web and there's not like in our case one of the challenges is there's not a lot of data available so 
it's kind of hard to piece these things together. So my, my question is, do you um, have a different approach in terms of communicating the market size or the opportunity in sell that doesn't completely rely on numbers? So to say, um, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to say don't use the numbers. And when I when I have suggested, uh, you know, data shouldn't come first. It, I, I'm not decrying data, right? Okay. So, so as a comms expert, I, I can tell you that the, the data isn't just studies show very few audience members are going to remember the specifics of data. Granted, are you going to have a data nerd in the audience who remembers the one thing on the slide that really gets your attention? Absolutely, right? Okay. But the, it's not what is going to draw in the maxima broadband of your audience. Okay? okay. So now, but if you start with the care proposition, so this is why my, this is what my product is going to solve, mm -hmm. getting me engaged and then follow with data sets. Because okay. data sets are a key part of the believe proposition, right? Then you come to, once I'm hooked in, you convince me that your solution meets the market requirements or meets a market need. Now on the data visualization piece, like there's a whole world of work on how to visualize data for audiences that you can leverage. And I can talk to Zoo about providing this uh, as a follow-up if you wish. Um, for some of the folks that I've seen already here in pitch sessions, I think having a, a good designer who's able to uh, do the data visualization in a way that makes sense on slides um, and then uh, practice it. And, and this sounds trite to say, but unless you're showing it to an audience that isn't your peeps, you're not getting the right feedback. So showing it to other collaborators, showing it to general people in, in a sense, this is why I'm involved with Zoo, Zoo is because I'm kind of a general audience member, possible investor. And so I'm able to give feedback that says, I don't understand that. Make it, make it simpler or make it more elaborate or do it differently. So the care pieces first, include the data and hire the right people to help you visualize it properly and then use the muscle to practice it. Gosh, it sounds like such simple advice, but these are the hardest things to do. They're the hardest things to do, especially when you're all encumbered by one thing. You all know your stories too well. You know every, every minute detail, corner aspect of every enjeu that you work with and it holds you back because you know too much. And when I hear pitches, you want to tell me everything you know. And I, it's too much for me as an audience member. And so the challenge for all of you is to learn how to scale back. Um, and at, at the end of the session, we're going to give you a takeaway as a follow-up that's called the Chair, Care Believe Join Grid that allows you to track over time statements and content that fall into each of those buckets. It's proven super helpful for other, I didn't create it, it's created by a company called Real Ventures in Montreal, um, but it's used by a lot of startup ecosystems. And well, thank you, that was very helpful. I had a, a follow-up question, um, if I may. Yeah. Um, in my context, what we're doing is not something that is very relatable uh, for most people because it's relatively niche and it's very it's a it's a B two B product. So um, I'm trying to get a sense of, and I know this is probably <laughs> just maybe have a, a suggestion here, but um, in French, c'est vulgarisé, how to make it palatable for people yeah. uh, that aren't, for example, technically savvy but at the same time, not too diluted so that it still relates to, um, you know, to, to, to what the product does. Um, so if I may offer uh, every single researcher I, I've worked with in Synth Bio and Biotech, even in the arts, arts community, every, mm -hmm. every startup, we all have complexity that's hard to convey to someone who isn't in our head and in our world, okay? Mm -hmm. So that part is not so new. Um, I, I think I would do a couple of things. How are you explaining it to your family members? I know you've probably heard this before. 
but you're at a family dinner and you're explaining what, what on earth the complexity is of what you do um, to someone who's not in your world at all, that for me is a starting point. Each one of you has a business proposition that has a social value, a value to a marketplace. So how are you explaining that to someone who really isn't at all in your world? And the questions they ask you, so, so here's what you do. You go to this family dinner and you explain, this is what I do. And then ask your family members, what stood out for you? Ask them what resonates. That will start to give you an indication of what's stuck for them. And, and that's a kind of audience testing that we should all do regardless of the presentations we're giving. Um, I see Amin has his hand up. Hey, Amin. It's kind of a really, hi, by the way. Uh, it's kind of related to, uh, to Alex's point. In my, in my case, like, um, I, I think right now I get way too much in the detail of my, what I'm doing, like explaining when I get in criteria. And I figured out that at the end of the day with my personality, who I am, it's, can I just say it the way I, I say it to everybody in the sense that I take, it's pretty much I take criteria from, from local restaurant, those personal criteria equal restaurant recommendation. That's what I'm trying to do. That's what I'm doing with my platform. And I, I keep like trying to go like detail criteria analysis grid. And I was like, it's not just make it as simple as I can. And that's how I said to like my mom pretty much, let's put it that way. So she could get it. Exactly. Exactly. Your mom, your grandma, your neighbor, um, uh, friends who are not involved in your ecosystem. Those are your first level audience right now. If you, as you're developing whatever kind of pitch you have, right? Because if they're going to get it, other people are going to get it. And the questions they're going to ask you, the questions I've asked Amin and, uh, and others, Alexandre and Danielle and others I've seen in detail, the questions I've asked them, I hope have helped them see what's sticking to me and what's what I'm not getting. And it's normal and quite natural that we forget to do that baseline audience testing. Why? Because you're busy with a ton of other stuff, right? Why would you do that? And then you rush to do a pitch and you think, okay, well, now I'm just going to read my deck. Well, the, the, the level of work that you've put into every aspect of your startup, you need to, to parcel out time to apply yourself to the communications pieces. I know it's impossible. It's hard to do. But it, it, I think, I hope some of you are seeing that that's key. And what's counterintuitive about what I'm proposing, what have we been all taught when we give presentations? First, tell me who you are. Tell me how fabulous you are. Prove to me that you're awesome. I'm telling you, don't do that to start with because I don't really care yet. <laughs> so get no. me to care first and then tell me how extraordinary you are. But even to Alex, uh, Alex point mentioned Alex. I think we have the same question <laughs> in terms of yeah. data and uh, say, like people, people in the room. I'm expecting them to know that they, they know that hospitality industry is worth 600 billion and growing at 10 percent rate. Why we should care to telling? At the end of the day, for me, before asking for money uh, from that and what I'm going to do with it, is it right to think that it's been 18 months that we're on, we're we live under a rock right now? Like I know that that part of personalization for restaurant. It's going to boom because you're going to go to a place. It's going to be closed. Ah, where are you going to go next? It's going to happen. So I, right. Instead of focusing on data, I could just focus on what I want, I want from there. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I think uh, we, what I've proposed uh, to the zoo organizers is we, and, and I'll ask you if you want to do this or you just want to keep talking here, because I'm, I'm happy to do either, but we can go into breakout rooms where you try a pitch with each other. So you do a care, believe, join, and then come back. Um, but uh, we're, we're not in a, a massive group. We can equally uh, try it out here if you wish. Do I have any, uh, do, can I do a sondage, a, a feeling on the room? Do you want to go into small groups? Fais-moi sing. Anybody want to go into small groups? Alika, qu'est-ce que vous pensez? But people that want to go in small groups, can you just like do a, a reaction. I think it could be like a nice way of practicing as well. 
yeah, so it, it's a safe, it's a safe space, right? Mm -hmm. You can, you can epic fail, you can shine, you can ask questions, you can, so let's, let's do it. it there's yeah. nothing like practice, right? It's the best place. Let's all fall on our faces together. Let's do it. Let's go into those small groups. Let's do it. Okay, so we're going to take about 15 in those small groups. Even if you've pitched before, you should totally do it again. Try out care, believe, join. Try to do it in a minute. And I'm going to circulate uh, through the rooms. So, Alika, on y va? Oui. C'est beau. Okay. Bonne chance tout le monde. À tantôt. It won't be too long. Oh, we're, oh, okay. Yeah. So right now, you will all see a massage asking you to join one room and we'll see you soon. Uh, Gabrielle, you'll tell me when we're all back because we, sh we should be all back by now. Okay, so uh, welcome back everyone. We have just a, a few minutes left. Uh, I, I wanted to uh, you know, ask you how it went, but offer you this. One minute is brutal, right? On s'entend que une minute, aucun bon sens. There's a reason for this. It's a great drill to use anytime when you're testing something new. One minute exposes everything that is good and bad about the way you communicate. It exposes all of your little ums and ahs. Ou en français, dans le fond, qu'on dit souvent, it's a wonderful verbal hick, dans le fond. Um, it brings out all that stuff, all of that stuff that gets in the way. And when you try a minute out with your, whatever your audience is going to be, it'll show you very quickly what people hear, what I call what sticks and what doesn't. So it's a, it's a great tool. The chances that you'll be subjected to a one minute pitch are pretty rare, but it's good practice and practice in pitching makes all the difference. I'm very fond of using boxing analogies but let me try one out on you again. I see a lot of fighters do exhibition fights. Exhibition fights are really important for fighters. It's where the stakes are pretty low. Whether you win or lose doesn't go on the card because both fighters win, right? But it's a way of testing yourself. And I challenge you all to try out whether you're fight fans or not, try your pitches and experiment with, um, trying them out with different audiences. And if you're familiar with the work of Daniel Pink, uh, who writes a lot about uh, um, entrepreneurship and uh, communications, he suggests about 20 times, trying out your pitch with different audiences 20 times. Anytime you have a chance to talk about what you do will matter and will make you stronger. Um, any feedback on what you tried out and heard today? Was Care Believe Join hard to do? Was it weird? Was it useful? Was it not useful? No, but as you said, I think, oh, go ahead. Vas -y, vas -y, Amy. <laughs> as you said, I think uh, doing the one minute, the Care Believe asked, made me realize that the care, I think I understand it. Am I good at it? Let's see. The believe for me so far in the ask, I think it's where I, the way I want to say that needs to work on. So when you segmented it that way for me today, I think uh, I realize where I should focus more. So thank you. Cool. Thanks, Amin. Uh, what I was going to say is for me, the one minute made me realize that you need to focus a lot more on the emotional to kind of hook the person and get them to ask the question that you answer in the five minute or the 10 minute pitch. So it's just the emotional, just the emotional part. Like why do you, and then after that, the rest can take care of itself. Whatever great intellects we are, we are emotive beings. We remember what we feel. We won't remember the data, though the data is gonna make us buy into you, the data will get later, right? So you're, you're always creating the conditions for your audience to remember who you are and come back to you, to talk about you to someone else. And the fewer filters, um, some people talk about in public speaking, we talk about um, creating less friction for the audience. So smoothing out the story, make it easy for people to get and grasp right away. 
give them something to hook on to. So I gave you something today. I told you I was a boxing judge. You may remember that. You may hate boxing. You may think it's ridiculous. You may think it's abhorrent and awful, but you may remember it. You may say, oh, there's this woman from Concordia who does this boxing thing, but she also told us about storytelling. I did that quite deliberately, right? I, I, I could have chosen other things, but I chose to do that with this audience. So you have the same choices that you can make. Autrement, d'autres questions, d'autres enjeux, d'autres... Uh, oh, we're going to share with you as a postscript the recording, but also it's, it's uh, from this company called Real Ventures and it's their Care, Believe, Join log. So what you do is you track kind of phrases that you can use as you think of them. Oh, that's a care piece. I'll put that in. That's a join piece. That's a belief thing. And it, it, it's kind of your log for your startup of your story that you can sustain over time. And that'll be your, your bonus for today. D'autres questions? Tout va bien? Oh, this is great. Thank you. I, I, from what I heard, you were all really good and super brave to do the one minute thing. Yikes. Amazing. Bon, uh, yeah, so this is it. It was the last infusion workshop. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this season. I hope that you really enjoy your, your summer. And, and especially thank you, Joanne, for your time. Um, it's amazing. I could hear you for hours. <laughs> so I'll share all of the documents with you. And if you have any questions, uh, please reach out. It was good. Thank you. Merci tout le monde. Bonne journée. Hi, uh, Joanne. Hi. Um, why don't you ask you something? Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, I didn't participate that much. I wasn't that ready. My project is in the beginning of processing, so I I just didn't feel confident. And that's mainly my problem, actually, because I know my project very well and I know where I want to go very well. But is that part on like starting and engaging with like people getting engaged with my story? Um, I don't know. I feel like there's a, that, that's been my biggest wall. So. Right. I would like to improve and get that out of my way so my project actually moves forward, right? Um, so I was wondering if I if I could ever pursue any type of program with you or something, because I, I think that that's the main part that it's kind of killing me right now. Right. Are, are you, yeah. well, thank you for that. Thanks for sharing that. And, and um, I mean, good self-awareness for you to kind of know where you are too with this, because, you know, not everybody's ready to, to, you didn't have to be ready to pitch to be in today. So, um, but are you in the zoo ecosystem? Like, are you in a program? Because I have seen some startups uh, or are you, are you not? No, I'm not. I, I make part of the zoo community, but my project is not in yet. I'll do it next year because I'm not ready yet to okay. submit my project. So that would be for next year. But I'm in the zoo um, uh, collective. Uh, res okay. um, so what I see, yeah, so maybe um, Alika can put you in direct contact with me and we can we can uh, talk about what kind of options are available to you. I do have some private clients that I've seen over the over the years. It's not a, a major focus of my practice, but we can talk. Yeah, because I think that that's the biggest the like I need to work very hard on that. Like there's that's one of the main issues I have right now is to be able to present my project to the public and to <laughs> to get what I need from it. Okay. So yeah. Okay, so it's a, it's a red flag. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I understand that. But uh, Alika can connect us and we can talk uh, some more. But thank you for the question. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank and you to you for your time.
Um, okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Alika. Thank you, Noor. I hope that was okay. You're happy? That was, that was perfect. Okay. I was late at the beginning, but uh, I've heard really, really fantastic echoes. So. Okay. So I just have to sort out the, I have this takeaway that I wanted everyone to have that I really like from Real Ventures that I use a lot. So I'm just gonna finalize that. I'll get it to Alika later today and you can share it with the group, okay? Perfect, thanks. It's, it's a pleasure. Thank you for asking, by the way. It was super fun working with you guys. It, just such a joy, thank you. Thanks, John. Yeah, I, I'm very exciting. Thank you, thank you. And, and any, anytime again you want uh, me to do stuff on, on the phone, okay? We have a next cohort in September. <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's really, really, really interesting. The projects are, of course, so different from D3 and, and so uh, really, really fascinating. Um, and I, I found the level really good. Like they're very, I don't know what you're doing with them, but it, they're, they show really well. Nice. <laughs> well, like that means a lot. <laughs> Yeah, nice to connect with you again too, Noor. Nice to see you. Yeah, always. always. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Alika. You've been a dream. And Gabrielle, thank you so much, you guys. Thanks, Joanne. It's been amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you. Yes, thank you for your time. And Joanne, let me know whenever you get the chance to send me those um, documents. We'll be able yes. to send them over tomorrow. I, I will take care of that later today. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful day. You too. You it's too. Nice to see you. Bye. Bye.